Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the GE dishwasher inlet sump. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new inlet sump. The main reason to be changing out the inlet sump is if it's old and damaged and has sprung a leak, or sometimes mice like to get in there and chew them up and you get water on the floor. In order to change out the part, we have to open up the dishwasher door. To make it easier to get to the parts, we're going to pull out the lower dish rack. Now that we have the lower dish rack out, we have access to the area. We took the lower spray arm out to make it easier for you to see at home. You don't have to take yours out, of course. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver or socket and take these two screws out. Now that we have the screws out, we can lift this grill out of the way and set it aside. And then we can remove this plastic piece in here so we can get to the sump. All you have to do is lift it out and you probably want to go clean it up before you put the new one in. When you're working on the lower part of the dishwasher and the part is easily accessible through the kick plate, you can change it that way but most times it's just easier to pull it out of the cabinet and turn it over so you have easy access to the parts. The first thing we have to do is open up the sink cabinets, remove your dishwasher drain line, follow it up to wherever it goes and remove the clamp. We're going to use a 5 16 on ours. Make sure that when you take these off that you have some towels around. Both the water line and the drain line might put some water out. Next thing we have to do is remove the fill line. It's usually connected to the hot water tap and of course we already had that shut off and the power disconnected from earlier but now we need to remove the line we can take it off with a 5 8 inch wrench now that we have everything disconnected underneath the sink we can open up the door and remove the two screws that attach the dishwasher to the cabinet then we can close the dishwasher door and pull it out of the cabinet. Once you have the dishwasher out from the cabinet, reach back and pull out the hoses so you can flip the dishwasher on its side. Now that we have the dishwasher upside down, we have access to underneath. It makes it easier to get in here and remove this clamp, which is a 5 16 inch. You can use a socket or a nut driver. Pull it off the pump and then pull the sump up out of the tub. Here's the old inland sump next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. They don't give you a new clamp, so just remember to take the old one off and put it onto the new one. To put the inlet sump in, we have to push it down into its hole. You might have to bend it a little bit to get it to go down there. Once you get it all the way in, you can push it up onto the pump and tighten the clamp down. Now that we have the clamp installed, we can turn the dishwasher back over on its feet and put the two grills back in on the inside. First thing we need to do is put the lines back through the cabinet. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway and then go underneath the sink and pull on the hoses to make sure that they're not kinked or caught on anything underneath. We can push the dishwasher back in the rest of the way. Now that we have the dishwasher in the cabinet, we can open up the door and put the screws back in. Now that we have the dishwasher back in place in the cabinet, we can hook back up the lines. So we're gonna hook up the water line and use our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down. Then we can hook up the drain line back up to the air gap. All you have to do is push it on and tighten down the clamp using your 5 16 nut driver or screwdriver. Before we can put the grills back in, you want to make sure that the inlet sump is seated all the way around the edge. It has a couple little um, rubber grooves in here for sealing that you have to make sure are pushed down in its groove so you just want to go around and push it all the way in. Once you have that back in 
You can put this little grill back in. The little cutout goes right on this notch right here. And then we can put our cover back in. Now that we have the part installed, we can put the lower dish rack back in. You can close the door, plug it back in, turn the water back on, and give it a whirl. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.